Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Peter Wolfe and uh, thank you for joining in again uh, with us today. Uh, one of the uh, questions, I got an email just recently and they wanted me to kind of outline uh, what is it that uh, we use here in this roastery to sort of measure, I, I guess, the performance or like a benchmark of our roasted sort of coffee? So we, we do a couple of different things here and I'll explain what they are, but also talk about some other general um, ideas or concepts that people use. I guess the main thing is, is, you know, and the first thing is keeping really accurate roasting logs um, that, you know, help with, you know, not only the time and the, the end temperature of, of your roast, I think is very, very important. Uh, and keeping those logs uh, really, really accurate uh, is, quite, is quite important. One of the things that we also use, um, you know, similar to what we did with uh, roasted, or the green density, is we do roasted density. So we go back to the old water pipe here. Um, and it's a, it's a volumetric measurement that we use. Um, and look, it is a little bit difficult, I guess, uh, initially to start with because the numbers sort of don't really mean anything until you start cupping your coffees and then you start you know, having an understanding of what does 380 grams a litre mean to my single origin or blend uh, when I'm tasting it versus say 352 grams a litre. And so what the roasted density numbers really mean is that um, the lower the number you go, so if you're at sort of 350 grams a litre, it can either really indicate that it's a very heavy roast, so the roast colour is quite dark, or it can also indi indicate that it's a very long roast, so we've lost, uh, we volumetrically have expanded the coffee uh, quite, quite a lot, so therefore there's less coffee that's, that's fitting into the water pipe, so it shows a lower weight. The higher the number also means uh, one of two things. Uh, so if it, say you're at 380 grams a litre, it's going to sort of mean that, you know, either the, the the temperature and the time has been about uh, about right. Uh, it could indicate that if the if the time's a little bit short, that shorter than you expected, and you get a heavier number, could sort of be pointing towards underdeveloped flavours, where you may be starting to get some grassiness, uh, a little bit watery uh, and sort of uh, thin, maybe a little bit of a um, little bit of bitterness or metallic sort of bitterness coming into the coffee from the leftover chlorogenic acid. Uh, so from our, our point of view, we kind of run between sort of 360 grams a litre to 380 grams a litre as a, as a benchmark for our espresso blends. And for our filtered coffee, we would be running from about 390 to 415 grams a litre. And you know, that is very origin dependent. But I guess the, th the key thing is once you sort of find the coffee experience that you, that you like from that particular origin or flavour, then that number kind of relates to that. And then so the beauty of this sort of system is that as you finish your roast and you've cooled it down, you put a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, you put a sample in the pipe, you weigh it, and then straight away you kind of know whether you're kind of hit, you're, you're hit or miss on that particular coffee. Other things that you can be looking at is obviously colour measurement. And look, there's a variety of different brands available for that, whether it's Agtron, Javalytics, Probat's Colorette, um, the Romy, uh, the, you know, there's, there's a number of different sort of colour measurement tools out there that one can be using. Another simple guide that you can also be using is just simple weight loss. So for every, you know, one kilogram of green coffee that you're using, you know, what are we, uh, what are you netting out at the other end uh, in terms of um, loss? So you're getting uh, like 800 grams of, uh, um, of roasted coffee, which would indicate a 20% roasting loss. Um, so the range that you'd be looking for, you know, that's acceptable would be between sort of 16 and 20%. And look, they are kind of very broad averages, but again, it's sort of something that you can start sort of looking towards uh, using that as a, as a performance benchmark. Definitely, I think also time is a, v, is a very key a very key thing in terms of roasting coffee. So managing, you know, how long does this coffee uh, take in the roaster? Uh, in our business, there's three key areas that we measure in terms of our um, monitoring software that we have, our, our control software that we have. We measure obviously from start um, to the commencement of the Maillard phase, so from basically the commencement to when it goes to yellow, and then from yellow to cinnamon, and then from cinnamon to the end of the roast time. Um, and we're sort of measuring, you know, what percentage of that total roast time that these areas are sort of occupying. Um, and these are areas that we continually def def focus on. Um, so there look just a couple of little strategies that one can use in your business um, to sort of help your roasting team kind of get more consistent uh, and then also really start putting in some quality sort of measures into your business. I'll see you soon. Thank you.